What's up guys? In this video, we are going to talk about how you should make decisions about your health um, and how much you should kind of like take the science into account when you're making those decisions versus like anecdotal evidence and practical experience that you hear from other people or from yourself, okay? So what am I talking about? What does this all mean? Well, I'm gonna get into it right now, okay? So before we get into that, actually, uh, if you guys enjoy videos like this that are a little bit non-mainstream, a little bit out there regarding health and fitness, fasting, some stuff maybe you don't hear on other YouTube channels or in the mainstream media, subscribe to my channel. I try to put out videos as often as I can. Also, go check out my digital marketing channel where I talk about making money online. Uh, so you can come and explore, uh, you know, Vietnam, the rooftop of like some coffee shop at 7 a.m., which is where I am right now with my phone duct taped to the wall because I lost my tripod. Okay, so what am I talking about? Um, well, here's the deal. Okay, there's a lot of uh, camps, let's say, when it comes to um, health and fitness, right? Should you be vegan? Should you be vegetarian? Should you do CrossFit? Should you run? Wait, what's the best type of cardio? Blah, blah, blah. Like all of this, all of this stuff that like people love to argue about, right? There's a lot of misinformation out there. A lot of people are talking about different strategies because they want to sell products. They want to sell their workout plans. There's just a lot of like, there's a lot of information being thrown at you and a lot of people, you know, I take it for granted because I've been like into fitness for a long time, more than half my life. God, that's depressing. Uh, but, you know, for somebody who's just starting out or who's not been like into this for as long as I have, it can seem a little bit overwhelming and maybe you don't know where to start or what to do. So naturally, you're going to want to go to the safe zone, you know, of science and say, well, science said that I should eat more vegetables, right? or science said I should eat more protein, okay? And, um, you know, theoretically those things are not untrue. You know, it makes sense logically to eat more protein and eat more vegetables, but is that really what's best for you, even, that's, even though that's what the science says? I'm gonna say probably not. Now we'll get to why in a second, but the reason that this kind of popped into my head is because I was on a Facebook group the other day and I, I posted a link to my video about Sverage and vegans and how he's like shaming vegans and all that. And this was a personal training group, right? It was a group of personal trainers who like try and promote themselves. Um, yeah, so I like post my videos to groups on Facebook to try and get more views, okay? So I posted this post about the link to the video about why vegan, you know, Sverage and why he's shaming vegans and why veganism is bad. And the kind of intro caption that I had to the post was that like, you know, everybody says you should eat more vegetables, but are they really that good for you? And if you look at vegans, like they look, they're, I said they're gaunt, they have rotten teeth, and like their hair's falling out and all this stuff, right? And, you know, I would say the responses were pretty split in terms of people who were like, yeah, veganism is terrible, and people who are like, well, actually, veganism is really good and you can be healthy on a vegan diet, right? So, I kind of took a look at what people were saying, they, you know, the, the people who disagreed with me, because I have an open mind, you know, I'm, I'm ready to be proven wrong about like, maybe, maybe veganism is better. Like from an ethical standpoint, it would be great if we could be vegans, you know? Like, I don't want to kill animals, I love animals. Cows are great, pigs are great, like chickens. I'm sure they're all like lovable, cuddly little things that like, if I could get the exact same nutrients and stuff from not eating them, I would totally do it, you know? But uh, you can't, so there you go. Or, you know, some people say you can't. But anyway, um, I was looking at like the responses from these people and they were showing me studies and they were saying like, well look at this athlete and look at that athlete. But the, the problem with all of their examples, well okay, one guy showed me a book called Proteinaholic, right? Which is this book by a bariatric surgeon which is a doctor that like, they do the stomach staples where they like artificially shrink the size of your stomach so that you can't, so that you get full faster and you end up ingesting fewer calories uh, when you eat, okay? So the idea is like you do this for somebody who's obese, they can't stuff themselves on junk food so they end up losing weight. Now, is this an ideal solution? No, it's not. So like 
this guy wrote a book about why protein is really making us fat and why, and he's a vegan by the way. Um, and you know, I was, my, my curiosity was piqued. I decided to like do a little research and I watched a video of this guy in an interview and basically, and he's a stand up guy. He's not like some jerk just trying to sell his book or something like that, although I'm, I'm sure that's why he did this interview. But basically he was saying like, you know, patients would come to him and he would do the surgery for them. And he said that like other bariatric surgeons, what they would say, they have like very basic, if not non-existent understanding of healthy fitness, right? And they would basically just tell their patients, eat more protein, eat more protein, eat more protein, right? And the patients who, have, who are obese, right, who have probably a worse understanding than the surgeon, um, would think, oh, well, you know, I, I need to eat these sausages because they have protein, or I need to eat this hamburger because it has protein, and that'll help me lose weight, and I'm not gonna eat these vegetables instead because I need my protein, right? The whole idea is that like, obese people think protein is the key to losing weight, not eating vegetables, right? Now, the issue with this is that from this guy's point of view, he's a bariatric surgeon, he's dealing only with obese people, right? If somebody were to tell me or to somebody else who works out one to two times a day, eat more vegetables, that's, that's not gonna work for me or for like your average person whose aspirations are more than just not being obese, which like if that's you, that's great, like definitely don't wanna be obese, but that's, you haven't even reached like a basic level of fitness if you're obese. Like you're almost not, you're like not even, you're not even in the running. I'm not saying you're like not a human being, but like you're not, you're not even like at level one. You're not even at level zero. You're like in the negative levels, right? No offense. But um, this guy's advice is given towards people who are essentially sick and gonna die very soon, right? And you're gonna give different advice to those people than you would to somebody who's an athlete or who's even just like a casual gym goer going like three or four days a week. And for those people, yeah, you need to eat more protein and you don't need to eat more vegetables. Like, why do you need to eat more vegetables? What's, what's the benefit that you're getting, right? And on top of that, you know, there was this study, I think done by the World Health Organization that linked meat to cancer. And there's all these problems with that study, like the, the percentage jump, you know, the, for the people that they studied was like, 16 to 19% or something like that. And they called it a 20% increase because the 3%, 3% of 16% is 20%, right? But people are thinking it's 20% overall, right? So they played with the numbers a little bit and they also lumped cured meats in with all meat, right? So like things like bacon and, and stuff that's heavily processed and heavily salted um, is obviously not gonna be as good for you as like lean cuts of beef for example, right? So anyway, what am I trying to say? When it comes to your health, yes, I guess science is like a good place to start. It's kind of like a good baseline, but don't use it as like the ultimate, like seal the deal, be all end all of like your health, right? Because it's not. What, what should be is looking at multiple people who have tried certain things um, and, and modeling what they do, right? Like if you find a group of people who get to certain results and they all have the same behavior, then naturally if you model what they do, if you join their group and you copy them, then you'll get the same result that they get. Now back to this like personal training vegan group, well it's not a vegan group, but the personal training group, all of the people who were saying, oh, veganism is healthy, you can be healthy on a vegan diet, I looked at all of their profiles and none of them looked very healthy, right? They all had like dad bods, you know? And the girls, they just looked like, you know, not, not like healthy looking girls either. So I looked at that and if I had seen one who was like ripped, you know, and all the people who were like pushing the carnivore diet, they're like jacked, like this one guy's like an MMA fighter and he's just like, you know, yoked, you know? So like, it just kind of goes to show that, uh, you know, if you want a certain result, just copy the people who have that result, right? Forget about the science. Like if you want to look like a piece of paper, like copy the science, you know what I mean? All right, so I don't know if that made any sense, um, but if you have any comments about that regarding anecdotal evidence versus scientific studies, leave a comment, um, ask me a question, like the video, 
you want to see more videos like this, click subscribe. Listen to honking horns instead of chickens. And if you guys want to see videos about digital marketing, go subscribe to my digital marketing channel. Cool? Peace.